I'd say they are looking for weak spots in our defenses. They can't make an attack over land for fear of Ahu's magical machines, so they're trying their luck by sea. They won't succeed, though. Not against the Legion. How am I enjoying it? Are you spoiling for a fight, Hunter? Are you? Sci seal stinks of fish, reeks of orcs, and on a good day, the wind disperses the stench of decomposing corpses. I can't remember the last time I had a proper piece of steak, and by now, I wretch at the mere sight of sardines. So in conclusion, I am not enjoying Sci seal. We are the pride of Rivalon, to be found and to be seen everywhere. We don't hide in the dark and lurk in corners like some I could mention. No, we protect the civilized from the barbaric, and we do so impeccably. I'm Captain Aureus, if you must know, leader of the Legion in Sicil. By which I mean I have the enviable task of commanding a battalion of walking dead. For I fear it may well be but a matter of time before the undead undo all my soldiers and turn them into dribbling hordes of their own misshapen number. You, again. Do feel free to depart from Sicile at your earliest convenience. That doesn't belong to us, you know. You're right, it doesn't. Sometimes I get a little overzealous. Source Hunter, welcome, welcome. But certainly. What would you like to know? Oh, I am but a wizard. A guardian of man and beast. And indeed, I am both. My body, like any other, is bound to temporal decay. 
but my spirit is a speck of light that shone forth from the eternal sun that is the cosmic soul. My task upon this earth is to protect the heart of nature, the very antithesis of which is the intrigue spun by demons and directors of the dead. Hence my involvement in Sysiel. You see, my one desire is to witness a world in which every mother looks around her and purrs with calm contentment, for she knows that her chicks or children, her cubs or calves, will grow up without knowing the meaning of menace, the enfeeblement of fear. To my great regret, none of them purr as yet. Oh, but that's not a trick. It's a blessing. Or does it surprise you that I enjoy taking a feline guise? Such magic is a gift, Hunter. To tread upon the realm of instinct, even articulate speech. Perhaps humanity's greatest asset cannot give expression to something so inextricably innate. To be out in the night, to stalk on silent paws and hunt with only the moon as your witness. You couldn't possibly imagine the thrill. But of course it's handy to speak in more than meows. And I couldn't brew potions or make machines without opposable thumbs, this I freely admit. Let's just say I have found a way to enjoy the best of two worlds. Oh, that'll never happen. Granted, a witch could make the polymorph permanent if she'd enchant me and my cat guys, but I'll just have to be careful around witches, won't I? I'm my own wizard, you know, and I don't intend to become anyone's familiar. By all means. Strangers leading orcs. Humans. But that would be like kittens leading a wolf pack. And yet, I have heard rumors about a sect of sorts, a shadowy set of worshippers that associate even with orcs. Some say they're sorcerers, but people will say that about anyone who behaves a bit strangely nowadays. I don't know quite what to make of this news, but thank you for informing me. It would be wise not to dismiss such a curious event out of hand. Of course. I hope your investigation fares well. I can but piece together what few morsels fell from the grapevine into a rather disappointing meal, I'm afraid. They say a woman arrived in the King Crab Inn sometime after midnight. She retired to a room on the ground floor where she was soon joined by a man who had been nursing the same cup of wine for hours. I say man and woman because both of them were cloaked and recognized by none. About an hour later, another figure arrived, headed for the same room. Soon after, a terrible commotion erupted and the thundering light of magic was witnessed by the few remaining patrons. It took a while for the landlord to pluck up the courage to enter the mystery room. When finally he did, he found Jake there, dead. How and why he came to be there, no one knows. But I had a good look around the scene of the crime before the Legion barred anyone from entering. A trace I myself have none. Even though the rest of the town has already mentally tried and convicted Jake's wife, Esmeralda. Now, it may well be established that she is, in fact, the guilty party. I'm not claiming that I'm certain she's innocent, but let's just say that if I really thought this murder case would be so very easily resolved, I wouldn't have sent for source hunters. And what might those be? One of them? Failed? Who is the mongrel that dares to question my engineering expertise? I take it the mutt in question was referring to the Sparkmaster 5000. It isn't failing, it just became... Well, it became self-aware. Frightfully annoying when that happens. You know what? Here's the remote access device with which I used to control it. There's a manual for that somewhere around here too. 
Yours, if you can find it. I really should invite Victoria one of these days, so she can help me organize my mess of a library. Unfortunately, that is absolutely correct. The Orc Siege is yet another hairball stuck in this city's already choking throat, and it shows no signs of abating. We've cordoned off the western beach where most Orc activity has been reported. For the nine lives of me, I can't seem to figure what they're doing here. There's nothing of interest along the waterfront, except for a set of caves with an unfavorable reputation. Maybe they're after some pirate's treasure, the fools. <laughs> In truth, I don't know. They've been clawing their way out of the ground for two years now, and for two years the stalemate between them and the living has been dragging on at a weary pace indeed. The Legion did a good job keeping them at bay, but I think it's fair to say that without my magic-infused ballastay, they'd have gotten the better of us by now. Someone is responsible for the outbreak. Necromancers are at work, but who are they and where do they hide? Alas, that searching for them is like searching for a single louse in a lion's fur. Oh, a mere trifle for one with the intellect of a feline and the engineering skills of a human? You basically construct a classic ballista, add a 100% legally obtained self-regenerating source of destructive magic to it, and... Bobcat's your uncle? Striking it, Rich! I hope your quest fares well, dear hunter. I hope your quest fares well, dear hunter.
sweet relief. Bless the seven, I am restored. You, again. Do feel free to depart from Sysil at your earliest convenience. She bit me in the face. Look on the bright side. Everyone knows the ugly soldiers are the most ferocious. Ugly will be the least of it. The beast looks rabid. In that case, you'll have the pleasure of putting her down yourself. I wish for... Hey, who's that then? Come on, stand where my good eye can see you. Easy, Tull. That's the source hunter you're talking to. She may have the look of a woman if you squint hard enough, but she's no more than a wild animal. We got reports of a strange-looking outsider skulking through the town with her bow drawn. I found her crouched behind a tree, taking aim at a fat old rat trotting along the city walls. I tapped her on the shoulder to see what was what, and the beast startled like a wild cat and lunged right at me. No, sir! Bit Tullia right in the face, she did. It wasn't pretty, and now it's got a chunk ripped off it to boot. Enjoy it while you can, Ver. 
There's not another legionnaire in the cohort that'll have you if I go rabid. I'd say you ought to take her off our hands if you had the space. Though we couldn't guarantee she'd do more than piddle on the floor and maul your furniture. Fluffier than Sicilian stew. Again! Did someone leave and have a door open? to evacuate this place while there's still some left to save, I say. Go! How fares your first quest, hero and hunter? Fabulously exciting, I'll bet. The deal isn't so bad on a quiet day. Yes, I've met them. Though they're a very promising... Waiting for what, exactly? I'll thank you to leave me be, you old bat. Back, demon! Back, or I'll... Well, what's this? Oh, <laughs> Madara, you lummox. A thousand pardons, comrade. This old bear's edgier than a dodecahedron these days. I'll tell you, it sure does me good to set eyes on another of our order. From Academy West, aren't you? Give Captain Mortruce my regards next time you see him. You wouldn't. I trained up in Academy North, after all. We don't cross paths with you Westies all that often. But it's always a pleasure when we do. Madar is the name. Retired. Or so the order keeps trying to tell me. But never out of commission. My hand to your cause and my sword at your side. Heavens, hornets! That's quite a story, comrade. And come to think of it, one that might concern you. See, I'm here on... Well, let's call it a loan from a town to the north of here. Hunter's Edge by name. There's been an attack there, comrade. Orcs. Not your run-of-the-mill savages, either. But ones who've taken dark magic to new heights. What they want in Hunter's Edge, I can't say. But it's my responsibility to send them packing. Preferably with their horns in their suitcases, and a knee-knocking fear of ever crossing paths with a sauce hunter again. I came south seeking the Legion's help, only to find it tied here in Sicil. They don't have a spare soldier to send northward, and even in my finest form. I can't clear the place of that many orcs without backup. By the skin of my teeth, comrade. The savages were rounding up villagers when one of them activated a tripwire on our village wizard's property. Fortunately for me, that particular wizard has a penchant for things that go boom in the night. I managed to wrench free of my captor's grip and flee toward the forest. He pursued me for miles, but I'd lost him before I made it into the Sicil hinterlands. Well, comrade, I hadn't thought of it till you tapped my shoulder just now, but perhaps that's where you come in. I need a contingent I can trust if I'm to take back the town. And the way I see it, you could use reinforcements here in town. I've been scouting Sicil for some time now, and I believe I've sussed out sufficient intel to help solve the murder of the Counselor. With our minds and swords in tandem, we'll make short work of the perpetrator. More than I'd hoped, comrade. I don't know what in tarnation's gotten into the townsfolk here, 
but there's enough dark magic running roughshod to topple a small mountain. There's Mayor Cecil's doings for one, and the mysteries of our master Thaleron for another. And on top of it all, the feline menace is lurking at every hearth and shadow. You mean you don't already know, comrade? Their kind can see in the dark. It ain't natural. Now don't get me wrong. I think the mayor's a decent sort, even if he can't hear farther than the tip of his own nose. But from what I've heard whispered around the docks, the old guy's gotten himself mixed up in something not quite on this side of the law. I suspect an illegal sauce artifact or substance is at the root of it, but exactly what or who's given it to him, I can't say. And since I haven't technically been assigned to Cycille, I don't have the authority to interrogate him. Fella seems like a humble doctor, but I bet my sword he's dealing in something darker and splints and tonics. A loose-lipped fishmonger let slip that she'd seen our good doctor scale the city wall on two separate occasions, well past midnight each time. What business could he have among the undead? Hardly the habit of an innocent healer, I'd say. But it seems you've got all the help you need, haven't you? More's the pity. We could have beheaded a hundred source yetis in the name of the Order. Tell me, Alistair. <laughs> Never saw you in the King Crab before. You're welcome to scratch me behind the ears if you like. I won't scratch back. I am Unsinkable Sam. At least that's what they call me around here. He used to be a ship's cat, but the clipper I was on sank, and I was the only one to wrestle himself free from the waves. The people here were kind and took me in, being the King Crab's foremost patron ever since. A magnificent ship she was. Used to belong to a pirate, I was told. Unlike me, she didn't prove to be unsinkable, though. We hit the cliffs right neath the lighthouse. Not very apt a name for that building, I must say, for no light was shining from it. Leave me be. The moment I hit the water, I writhed around like I would on a hot tin roof. By some miracle, I managed to reach the beach, covered in kelp and smelling worse than a fish's funeral parlor. But I was alive, and that was more than anybody else could say. So I was. What friends I had, they drowned alongside the rats I used to hunt in the galley. And there I was, all alone. Not that I have it bad here, mind you. I've milk and fish aplenty. Most folks will pet me kindly, and when one of the village girls holds me tight against her ample bosom, I purr up a storm. But I do long for a companion of my own kind. And in that regard, there is no one like Maxime. Maxime. The mayor's darling pet. So gentle. So... Fair a feline, the grace of her whiskers, the subtle palette of dyes in her sable coat. She's one of a kind, that cat. She likes me, I, I know she does, but when I declare my love, she backs away. I don't know why, I I've serenaded her and braved many a bucket of water for my efforts, but for some reason she is not to be swayed. By all means. Tell me. People make a fuss about them because they endanger the lands around the city. They never bother me when I'm out for my monthly walk, though. But still, I do detest them. I mean, they're so unnatural, aren't they? Cats can have nine lives, but humans are only entitled to one. Adam. Oh, oh, don't mention orcs to me. Worse than dogs, that lot. Sank Walrus Willie's boat right from under him. Best anchovy fisher in the world he was. A loss to us all. So you're just hanging around the inn, are you? 
waiting a for a source come. hunter. I'd like to report some dark magic. Only tainted hearts could tip as miserably as this lot. Been at the King Crab nearly ten years now, personally. Seen every character you can imagine, from bums to wizards, pass through these doors for a pint and a place to rest. I think I'm one of the last folks to hear him alive. That awful scream has been ringing in my ears ever since. And with the room where it all happened still under quarantine, we have a constant reminder of exactly what happened. Though that's the question, isn't it? What exactly did happen? We all thought it was Esmeralda who checked into that room, and the Duke that followed her in. I was washing up and nudging the last of the lushes out of the door when a cloaked woman rushed in right past me. I never got a good look at her, damn my eyes, but I figured the way she disappeared that she was visiting one of the lodgers. Lucky for the perpetrators, I was rinsing bottles in the back when the terrible deed took place and saw nothing more. I'm not proud to say I ducked under the counter and damn well stayed there till I heard Ivab fling that door open, but I was paralyzed with fright. For what, exactly? I'll thank you to leave me be, you old bat. Oh! Ah, what have we here? A source hunter, is it? Well, my day just became rather more stimulating. Well, stand still then, if you don't mind. I want to take a good long look at the so-called savior of Sicil. Tall as an elf, strong as an orc, but your face, quite classical, isn't it? Statuesque, some might say. Yes, smooth and sturdy as marble, yet fine as a chisel's edge. And my word, what passion burns from your eyes. Please forgive my being forward, but I... I dare say, can it be? You're... Well, you're exactly the person I've been searching for. That I have. For nearly a lifetime, it seems. Well, I'm sure you must know what I mean. Like existence itself lacked a significant component. Like if you could only fill a certain void, could connect with the right body, the right spirit. Together you could uncover new and thrilling vistas. I believe I have found that component, that body, that spirit within you, Source Hunter. Come, if ever we are to be united, we must truly entwine our fates. We must link our causes forevermore. Yes, you must join the Fabulous Five right away, as soon as time permits. Together, as a team, we'll explore the boundless realm before us. We'll uncover fate, inch by inch. I am Anna, jewel in the crown that is the Fabulous Five. I've cut a thousand throats and baked a thousand bread rolls. Stolen the crown jewels of the Queen of Arata, and, with my pockets full, helped her reach enlightenment. When the day comes that I die, the gods will evacuate the heavens to make space for my formidable collection of designer slippers. I contain multitudes, you see, and I am utterly replete, except that, much to my dismay, I had as yet to find the companion to whom my heart so clearly calls. But then, Source Hunter, you wandered into this tavern, and I... Oh, I am most certain that that companion is you. So you've joined up. You've sworn to share in our adversity and our bounty alike. Oh, you've made my heart sore. I can finally offer you our finest adventuring equipment at fantastic in-house rates. Come now, let's trade. Well, you must be thrilled to find yourself a member of a team so widely renowned for its valor and skill. And you must be even more curious about how you yourself can suit up to face such enemies as a member of the Fabulous Five must face. Well, never fear. I have everything you need. Ah, oh, darling, that was so long ago now. Who can remember who said what after all this time? What matters is the here and now, 
And in this moment, I promise to give you the best deals on adventuring equipment you'll find in all Sicil. Well, you are a member of the eminent Fabulous Five, after all. Sorry, I've run out of signed handkerchiefs. An Alistair Keyring, maybe. In any case, make it quick. You're not the only fan who wants some of my time. What do you mean, not familiar? You expect me to believe you've never heard of Alistair the Almighty? Why, I'm only the most famous wizard this side of the Distus. Although, it'd be worth checking the other side too, just in case. And don't forget, I'm the most eminent member of the Fabulous Five to boot. Surely you already know we've been voted the most influential adventurers guild by SideQuest Monthly. Three years running. Those nasty beasts are hardly worth my time. Though I suppose I'll step in if none of the recruits manage to prove adept enough to handle a few skeletons. Oh, my good man. Drink, if you please. Ah, you'll be dealing with Ahu's little abomination, will you? I'd go myself, but I'd fear I'd end the fight before anyone else got in their licks. If I don't leave a few crumbs for the newbies once in a while, they'll accuse me of stealing the spotlight, you see. Well, well, you're far from my caliber, but who isn't? It's good you're eager, but let me give you a word of warning. Aim for my spot, and your career in the Fabulous Five will meet a most unsavory end. Alistair, have you ever had the fortune of challenging the fabled wizard of Hunter's Edge? Fortune? Ha! Simbladorix! Zat! Ha! Quite under my spell, aren't you? Yes, my enfriending charm never fails. Me? You mean you don't recognize me? Well, you must live under a very large, very heavy rock, for I'm the finest wizard in Rivellon. Yes, that is strange. Strange indeed. But it's a strange world we live in, isn't it? A strange and magical world, full of wonders and regionis regentum. Pipe. Look, careful now. Your head's grown more swollen than Oh, saddle. you'll find out. <laughs> you'll find out indeed. If I'm as good as they say I am, I am, you'll have sprouted a pair of long purple ears in the next hour. Ah, oh, how I do love a tasty aubergine in summertime. Whatever happened to that troop of eager imbeciles we sent to the Northern Cave? Do I seem like the sort who concerns myself with such things? You'll be concerned enough when you realize that reward money won't be lining your pockets. Oh, my good man. Drink, if you please. Please do keep shouting in my ear. Greetings, traveler. And may the Immaculate Conduit's myriad blessings comfort and cradle you. Tell me, have you yet heard the revelation? You mean you haven't heard? Oh, what fortune that I may share the goddess's salvation with one who has, as yet, been lost. Steal yourself, friend, for your mortal spirit could be forever transformed from this moment forth. The conduit our link to the goddess herself has given us a special gift, and the gift is thus. By following her instructions, 
and becoming initiated into the one way we can each of us live on for a span greater than the number of stars that twinkle within the goddess's right eye. She came from on high to we mortals and showed us the path to the goddess where all living souls are naturally inclined. She showed us that injury and malady need not mark the end of life, but that through her methods, we could ascend to greater life in service of the goddess. Ah, for this hallowed information, you must seek an immaculate chapel. Go north, friend, through the forest and into the town of Silver Glen, where all may be revealed. There, among her followers and friends, dwells the goddess's ecstasy, her one way. Oh, my good man. What's in a name, dear friend? For we all begin equal in the conduit's eyes? and only through great deeds may enter into her inner ring. Go on the path to the righteous, my friend. Forget not that the conduit has great plans for you. Have you ever had the fortune of challenging the fabled wizard of Hunter's Edge? Fortune? Ha! He should be so lucky as to be defeated by Alistair the Great. They say he's privy to ancient and arcane secrets, the likes of which I doubt you could even fathom, old friend. This town has seen better days, but despite it all, we'll always have the sea. I swear I saw a lady in red upon the beach, but everyone laughs and says, I'll see mermaids next. Leave me be, I have a job to do. Greetings, greetings. Oh, you are most welcome in my chamber. Customers rarely find me up here, but I do so abhor the hustle and bustle of the marketplace. That I am. I have spent more of my life on the road travelling alongside great caravans than I have in any given place in Rivalon. All of this earth is my home, for a few days or even but a few hours at a time, that is. You wouldn't believe some of the things I have seen. Oh yes, a city besieged by the dead isn't even remotely special to me. All the better that it isn't for you and for me, because outlandish events lead to outlandish wares. Oh, but let us not discuss. Let us browse and barter.
Greetings, Source Hunter. I don't mean to hinder your investigation, but I can't open this door for anyone who hasn't received Captain Aureus' explicit approval. Not exactly the friendliest bloke the captain, is he? Well, your reward for getting your ear chewed off is a waltz through the town's finest magical murder scene. Enjoy. Oh, thank heavens. Maybe now you can learn something useful. So What? What happened? Is this a dream? I don't think so. That stone... Somehow it sent us flying into the stars. Terrible, terrible, terrible! It will consume us all! By the quill that lasts a billion words, what's this? Two Rivalonians here? At the end of space and time? How very, very, very curious! Oh, yes, 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 yes. Proper introductions. Zigzax the historian at your service. It is my job to record all that was and is and hopefully all that is to be. As for how I got here, well, for a historian appointed by the gods themselves, hopping to the end of time is as easy as one, two, three. How you got here, though? That's a rather more interesting question. On such a tiny and rapidly shrinking vestige of space and time, 
I wouldn't have expected to find a soul but my own shadow. Ah, at last a question I can answer most definitively. I mentioned already that this place is the end of time. If that didn't send your heart into your stomach and your pulse a flutter, it should have. 